Live from the USA, helping you get paid every day. This is the boss of Bitcoin, the Cristo of crypto. It's your boy BK. And if you don't like me, you must not like money. Today is July 31st. Judgment Day has arrived. We got two directions we could go. One direction calls for a hot summer. BTC. 4,000. The other direction calls for a very, very cold winter. Winter may be upon us. It's still, it's still up uh, to the market. You know, it's beautiful. We could really go both ways. We could either go to the moon or smack straight into the flow. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about right now is uh, really how does uh, this economy work? And, and what are the changes that are happening? And how does that affect how we'll be able to make money as a result of it? You know, um, I mean, I, I know it's real easy to just think about Bitcoin and, you know, buy it and sell it, hopefully make some money, um, you know. But it's it's a lot more than that. It is it is its own economy. So that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about today how does bitcoin cash affect it how does a fork affect it uh and as a result what do we need to do uh to maneuver be profitable and be prosperous in this time of uh confusion and controversy right so um this is uh today's segment somebody's got to be the boss i don't worked a lot of jobs in my life some of them for two dollars an hour plus tips and even when I got my check, when I was making $2 an hour, every check I got, you know, for working 14, 16 hours a week, $2 an hour, do the math. But every check I got, they still gave me one. <laughs> even though even though I could have probably been panhandling on the street corner and made more, they still gave me a check, made me put it in the bank. Every single check has somebody else's signature on it. You wanna know why? Because somebody's gotta be the boss. And I'm telling you right now, I'm putting my name on this market. I put my name on these charts. And by doing that, I'm able to give you so much more insight, so much more perception, so much more understanding and awareness into this crypto verse than, than many other uh, traders. Um, because I actually understand I live in the charts um, and I have developed uh, a world renowned method, um, patented, don't copy it. Um, and it works. And now I'll give it to you for free. You're welcome. Like and subscribe and share. That's all I ask. This is a PowerPoint presentation I put together uh, that describes uh, the situation that we're in right now. It's it's more or less a, a, a class. Uh, one of the one of the people after listening to it said, you know, you're going to be given <laughs> given this presentation at a college one day. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And when I do, they go pay me a lot of money for it, you know, because college has got that long money. You know, got that free money from Uncle Sam for all them student loans. So they gonna have to pay for this. But you guys get it for free tonight. Just just for being my guests this evening. Right. All right. So let's see what we got to do. Bam. Bam. So here we go. Picking up where we left off last night. Um, again, uh, this is day two of our discussion of cryptonomics. I, I will have a playlist. It should pop up right here on a tab for everybody uh, watching on YouTube. Um, and it's a playlist called Cryptonomics uh, to where I discuss the economics of cryptocurrency. Uh, I made that word up. I think it's pretty cool. So just know you heard it here first. Uh, today we're talking about Bitcoin Cash's impact on the crypto economy. What does a hard fork mean for Bitcoin? Um, and how will we look uh, as a result coming out of it? You know, that's one of the biggest things I think uh, we want to discuss with our time together today. Uh, when we ended yesterday, this is the slide we ended on for the most part. We talked about uh, what does the moon look like? And by the moon, I mean mass adoption of technology. This is a chart, a simple, simple uh, adoption chart that shows all the big, big societal uh, changes for uh, technology and what it did. So you look at, uh, you know, the one we were talking about the most was the automobile, right? The automobile, they say, took almost a hundred years 
to catch on, to only get 80% adoption rate, 100 years. But then we talked about all the different things that go into mass adoption for the automobile. You have to have uh, supply chains. You have to have steel. You have to have rubber for the tires. You have to have freeways being built. You have to have a, a country of people that know how to drive, which means you also have to have a DMV. You also have to have a driving test. You have to have police officers on the freeways, quote, keeping everyone safe. You have to have stoplights. You have to have electricity for those stoplights. You have to have all these different things in order for that automobile to be accessible to everybody. And that's what we see happening uh, in the cryptocurrency world right now. We are starting to get a lot of governance that is in turn going to set up the next 10, 50, uh, 100 years of cryptocurrency. It's all happening right now. Uh, and, and because we are living in the moment, you know, sometimes we don't understand that that's actually what happened. Uh, another thing I wanted to break out on this chart, that orange line right there is at 30%. Uh, the reason why it's at 30% is because a lot of uh, economists recognize that percentage as um, critical mass. So essentially, when you get 30% of a group of people to adopt something, say, for example, Facebook, once three out of 10 people were on Facebook, that means it was just the rest, uh, a matter of time before everybody else got on Facebook. Um, you know, they call this uh, the, the seven, uh, seven, I think it's like, the, mm, I forget the word for it. But essentially, when you have a certain group of people that know something, that communal knowledge is shared and dissipated throughout the entire uh, collective consciousness of, of, of that group. And, and everyone becomes enlightened as a result. Um, it's it's pretty amazing how that works. So you can see the internet got that 30% inside of five years. It was, boom, it was amazing. You know, people call Bitcoin the internet of money. Andres Antonopoulos does that. Uh, but Bitcoin has been out for almost 10 years now and we have nowhere near 30%. So just imagine what the market will be uh, once we do. And we hit that tipping point and then it's just a matter of time before the rest of the world catches up to where we're at right now. So that's really, really um, a good introduction just to give you an idea of how these different things are coming together. Most importantly, uh, what the future will look like as a result. So right now. Uh, this is kind of a, a review session from yesterday and, and breaking into a, a little bit of a dialogue today. Uh, we see that, you know, and this is just the coins with say a hundred plus million dollars and it's probably more now than than this but this is just say the top 10 top 8 top 12 coins um there are i believe at last count 800 different cryptocurrencies out there uh each fighting for the almighty dollar and so are they are they really fighting against each other um well that's that's up for discussion right uh i don't think they are I don't I don't think Bitcoin is fighting with Litecoin uh, for market share. You know, this isn't Apple and this isn't Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Right. Uh, one of them didn't steal something from the other. One of them isn't, you know, poisoning half the world with uh, fake fake medicine. Um, and yes, I did say that. Uh, But when we look at this list, we see the possibility of what could be. We, we, we'll get on it on the next slide, but you start to see how these things are segmented out and how they're actually going to be pivotal in supporting the economy in the decades moving forward. So uh, one of the things we talked about yesterday was supply and demand. Essentially, on that bottom left-hand uh, chart there, you see the blue line, supply, the red line, demand. Um, when supply increases, right? That blue line price gets lower, right? So for example, that's uh, if, you know, you go to the store and they have apples, right? And then another three trucks comes in and bring those apples right there while you're at the store, more than likely they're going to say, oh, we got to sell on apples today. Apples are half off because they want more people to come in the store and buy those apples because they got too many of them. Supply is too high. Price has to be low, right? Uh, but when demand decreases, now say, you know, the store across the street says, okay, we got all these oranges for sale. We got three for one oranges, you know? 
um, then you're like, okay, well, I don't want apples. Now I want oranges. I'm going to go to this store and get oranges because, you know, they're, they're giving them away for free over here. Uh, and that's when demand decreases, right? And as a result, normally price has to go up because those people have to make money uh, to make up for the lack of revenue coming from the additional sales. So this is where you have excess supply, excess demand, economic loss, all these different things are built into this simple, simple curve here. Um, and it's basically the basic theology. Just think a, a, a simple rule to remember the individual is self-interested, um, but the market is not. The market wants equilibrium. The market wants balance. And that's where this whole uh, disassociation from a centralized governance comes from, because it's no longer a free market. America was often bragged about as being the most idealistic, capitalistic, capitalist uh, economy in the world. But in actuality, it's no longer that. As we see, just as Bitcoin, the crypto community has done, you know, just a handful of players have risen to the top and now essentially will dictate uh, probably the next 50 years of crypto. America's the same way, right? Um, in so much that you now have two powerhouses in the cryptoverse, US, China, that are basically, you know, putting, uh, setting up shop, right? Uh, nobody's talking about this. You don't hear this on any other channel, but we have what could be the beginning of another uh, very long, drawn out, uh, I'll call it um, confrontation between the East and the West. Um, and a lot of it is splitting right down the middle with cryptocurrency. A lot of it is splitting right down the middle with what exchanges choose to support Bitcoin Cash. What exchanges will give uh, their holders free Bitcoin Cash on the split? American exchanges? No. Asian exchanges? Yes. So now you see. Now it's cryptocurrency is, is coming into the politics side of it. That's why the SEC showed up last week uh, and shut down a site, put out some more governance and said, oh, these things are securities, gave a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo and said, we might come in and intervene in the future. Uh, we'll get back to you in six months. You know, I don't I really I, I don't understand what they do, but because our government choose to put a bunch of our tax dollars to paying two, three hundred dollar two, three thousand uh, dollar a year salaries on behalf of them, they're still here. So it's no getting around it. But again, this is why I say competition is good for the economy, right? That's what we learned. But is that actually what happens? You know? So that, that puts the question up for discussion. Is it good for the economy or is it just the outcome of an uh, inefficient economy? Because if I could get you the best product you would ever want, for the best price, would you need to go look anywhere else? Think about it. You know, this is th these are these are the fundamental philosophies of economics, macroeconomics, and how billions and even trillions of dollars are leveraged through a handful of assets on a very simple principle, all the way out to the biggest two powerhouses in the world. And so in thinking about that and understanding where we come from, uh, from a simple idea of, you know, money on the internet, that computers could solve math problems to earn as a reward, from just that idea, we've expanded into this. That's a, a beautiful distribution from an idea came a hundred billion dollars in a standoff between two superpowers. What comes next? This is what I think will be a start. Um, right now, we are building the infrastructure of a long-standing, probably, probably a thousand years standing. I think digital money will probably last probably the next thousand years uh, on this planet.
but currently we're building the infrastructure of a digital economy. Um, and you see these different things coming together. I'm gonna break this one slide out in another video uh, just on this one slide, because uh, as I was doing it, it really started to uh, come together for me. But essentially what you have, and this is the, the this is Cryptopolis, you know, Cryptopolis, BK uh, is the president of Cryptopolis right there in the middle, 2030. Um, he's the boss, Cryptopolis. <laughs> Market cap, $10 trillion. Just let that sink in for a minute. You know, right now we're at a hundred billion, so multiply that by about, you know, a thousand, and and that's where we'll be, probably eight, twelve years from now, fifteen years from now. But we see Bitcoin is still the sun. But what's happened? You have all these other players that have popped up and more or less claimed their stake in this virtual city of money. Um, for example, uh, you have NEO, which is decentralized, green, next generation, good for the economy, uh, altcoin right there in the green area of town. This is a renewable energy close to the sun. They got some solar panels on top of that roof. They got a garden over here, one of the only gardens in the city. Um, kind of reminds me of New York. But... Over here, the same thing, ant shares on the side of a building. Why? Because they've already partnered with the local municipalities, the local authorities. They've, you know, underwrote all of these new buildings that came up. This is the ant share complex right here, built on the blockchain. Every mortgage that gets written, every lease that goes vacant is validated and paid for through ant shares. You know, then you got Lisk uh, that's helping out. You got Stratus up here, you know, those big corporations, Oracle, IBM, Microsoft, you know, this is Wall Street area right there. You know, you go into any major city, drive downtown, every building downtown got, got one of these companies' names on it. You know why? Because they own the money. You know, you know who else is playing in that area? Veritasium. Reggie go be making money off all them big buildings, right? So they'll be there, you know. Then you got you got my man Monero, you know. Everybody got to have they connect. He hanging out down in the alleys in the shadows, you know. But he's still getting it done. He's still he's still playing his part in in the cryptoverse. He's still playing his part in the community. He's just hanging out in the shadows, but people still know he's there. They know where he at. You know, whenever they want to jump over, they go see him, slap his hand, get what they need, and and, and keep it moving. You know, to the nice part of town. Right. In fact, he got more customers in these high rises probably than anywhere else in this whole city. But that's another discussion. Then we got Dash, Pivx, you know, uh, holding it down, more or less bridging uh, municipalities and corporates to uh, residential and community. Right. So Dash is real close with with governance and real close with with uh, big industrial commerce. Pivx is a lot smaller, a lot a lot faster, more or less the Litecoin. You notice they're on opposite sides. It's more or less the Litecoin, whereas Pivx is on commercial. Litecoin is on personal. Litecoin is you know the pocket change of Bitcoin, right? You got Zcash down there building the roads. Don't nobody even know about them. Uh, don't nobody pay them no attention. These the guys in the trenches digging out the sewers. You know, sewer flood. People just call Zcash. These are guys laying down the framework that this whole city is built on. That's why. That's why ain't nobody in Zcash worried about this little dip right now because they they built this whole city. You know, they they built a lot of the future infrastructure that's gonna be getting built out, especially when you're talking about <clears throat> security, IoT. Um, you know, uh, smart smart cities. Yeah. Get some Zcash while it's still cheap. I passed on it at fifty-four dollars, and I'm I'm pretty upset with myself about that decision. Uh, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum, you know the, the twin towers over here. I think ETC go have its own little tower on the side of Ethereum. I don't think it'll have to hang out in the shadows like it is right now, but uh, you know that's that's a day uh, yet to come. And then lastly, EOS, which is basically a framework, a platform that is building a land that nobody even knows what could be possible. Um, and lastly, you got 10X on the side of the stadium. 10X is go, go be like Visa, 
you know, I went to the Olympics in Rio via visa, had a billboard every five feet. You walked everywhere you want to be. Uh, that's going to be 10 X. Um, so, you know, they got, they, they got their own little stadium right there in the center of Cryptopolis. BK got his, his presidential suite, you know, right there, 50 yard line, uh, executive, executive couch. You know, I just got one big chair and, and a big suite, you know, that's, that's it. That's all I want. Just one chair, you know, but this, this starts to let you guys know that even though it looks like this right now, you know, or, or you go on coinmarketcap.com and all you see is red and green lines. In actuality, it's behind the scenes. This is being built. And uh, the governance that we have right now, the uh, legislation that we have right now, the the huge, huge corporate investments that have happened and will continue to happen to build all these buildings right here, making all this possible. So again, don't don't look at it as one day. Don't look at it as one hard fork. Don't look at it as one segwit. Don't look at it as you know one dip in the market, one bubble, whatever it is. You know, just know it has to happen in order for this future to be possible. You know, this is a little thing I put together with my engineering degree from the University of Wisconsin. Your boy was a civil engineer before he was you know a day trader and a boss. You know, back in the day, I was working for the Wisconsin Department of Transportation and, you know, working in AutoCAD. We built cities. We, you know, we understood the infrastructure, the groundwork, the framework that went into civilization. And so that's what we're building right now uh, in Bitcoin is an economy, a digital civilization of commerce. And again, I will discuss this a lot more. If, if this is your first time tuning in, congratulations. As you can see right now, you are rocking with a boss. I live in these charts. I love crypto. I love making money, you know, and I love helping people. And I think this is the best time we have as a people uh, to empower ourselves financially. And with that being said, um, one of the things I wanted to do, that's all I, that's all I got for tonight. Um, I'm gonna do a lot more, you know, in the future, but it was more so just, just getting this content out there, uh, letting people understand, uh, where we, where we fit in, uh, in the crypto verse. And also to try to clarify, uh, any confusion. I know there was some confusion earlier on i I'm gonna pull it up real quick with, uh, Bitcoin cash and, uh, even coin market cap. One of, uh, the people in our community, um, mentioned that, uh, coin market cap, you know, had uh, the ticker listed wrong, right? So let me jump on here real quick. And as a result, people were buying the wrong ticker. And so one of the things, you know, I try to do is jump on and help people understand what's going on. If there's any confusion in the market, you know, that's not good for anybody. So. Uh, what we can see is that if we type in Bitcoin Cash futures, the ticker for Bitcoin Cash is BCC listed on Coin Market Cap. The problem with that is BitConnect is already BCC. So whoever is at Coin Market Cap, please. Uh, you know, speak with the guys at Bitcoin Cash to come up with another ticker. I think it might be BCH now. Uh, that makes more sense. But you can see that, you know, a lot of people are out there buying BitConnect thinking it's Bitcoin Cash. Uh, so if you own BitConnect, you might want to sell it here at 65 because uh, this time tomorrow, it's probably going to be a lot of mad people. And that thing is going to drop down like 20 bucks. Um, you know, but again, this is, these are the growing pains we go through, uh, to get the $10 trillion inside of 20 years. Um, so it's just a part of the process, growing pains. That's all. With that being said, I wanted to, uh, invite everyone on this channel to the number one Bitcoin group in the world. Uh, we are growing every single day. We got 6,000 members. You know, I throw videos on there every single, every single day I'm on. Um, everybody's talking about security. I was, I had a, I had a dilemma earlier. Uh, I had some money on, 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 uh, 
Ether Delta. I never used it before. I'm trying to buy up some Veritasium while it's $150. And I, I finally got it. But I had no idea what I was doing. And you can see it was it was pretty incredible. Inside of, I would say, about 20 minutes, I had probably 20 or 30 different comments. And, and together, we figured it out. Together, I got my Veritasium. So I appreciate you guys helping me out. Thank you so much for that. Um, but that's what we do. That's that's why we're here. We're here to help each other. We're here to empower each other. We're here to support each other. Uh, and and lastly, we're here to make some money together. You know, and this is our community. So I invite you. The doors are always open. Uh, again, it's the number one Bitcoin group in the world. Dot com. Uh, last thing I want to invite you to uh, is, you know, I want to invite you, invite you to my to my office. Close the door on your way on your way in. You know, let's just speak privately. I I, I threw this little thing together, Eventbrite. Don't like me. They they must not like money because your boy was making money on there. They said I was violating terms of service. I said, okay, Eventbrite. So in 48 hours, I pumped out my own website, falseofbitcoin.com. Uh, that's what we rocking. And I say, you know, you're one of the one of the world's best, man, and giving us away for free. A hundred nations all over the world, you know, uh, coming together to empower our members and make this money. And so uh, on this website, uh, we do have the opportunity for you guys uh, to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, with me. It's an hour. You pay $25 and you get access to my calendar uh, to confirm your availability. In addition to that, this is the biggest thing right here, uh, especially especially in this swing market that we're going to see uh, coming up here. This is called the profit package. It's it's normally $25 uh, for the next probably 24, 48 hours. I'm going to have this thing on sale for 15 bucks. Uh, so if you got it on Eventbrite, uh, I would appreciate it if you purchase it again on here. That money from Eventbrite will be refunded this week. So everybody that didn't, uh, you can come straight here, straight to the source. You get it on sale. You get it at a discount. Uh, $15. This thing is hand selected. Uh, and everybody asks, is it still relevant? Yes, it is still relevant. I actually just bought uh, some of these coins today. Um, so it's it's very relevant. It's, it's great. I haven't had one complaint about you know, the profit package when somebody buys it and they see, you know, the level of detail and understanding and thoroughness and and uh, the markets, you know, the insight 10, 12, 15 years almost of me trading in the markets uh, that, you know, you get that for 15 bucks right here on your top 10. And, and the last one, I believe we were up probably 60, almost 60 percent inside of two weeks of me releasing it. So you can expect similar returns on this one as well. With that being said, that's all I got, man. Uh, if you in the chat right now, do me a favor, shout your country out. Um, and I will uh, jump on there in a second and, and make sure uh, everybody gets some loves, right? So that's one of the things we, I want to make sure, you know, we can, uh, we can all empower each other. Let our community know where you coming from. So that way, if you got somebody in Cambodia or, you know what I'm saying? Like my man, Carl, I appreciate Carl. Thank you so much, dog. I had this one dude, my man, Carl. Um, helped me out so much. I was stressing out trying to get this Bitcoin uh, converted over from my fiat money. And so one of the one of the guys in the community really looked out for me. So again, um, that's all we try to do is look out for each other, help people make some money um, and ultimately uh, put ourselves in a better situation than we are today. Uh, last thing, my man, Big Reds, uh, me and him got an interview. Amazing, amazing discussion. Uh, it took some time, especially with this Bitcoin cash thing. I wanted to hold off on releasing it that way. We weren't, nobody was, you know, uh, distracted with SegWit and a fork and B BCC versus BitConnect. So uh, that will be coming out this weekend. So look out for that as well. And with that being said, man, let's let's clean it up. Let's uh let's let's roll this thing on out. So I'm gonna jump in here and and see, send my people off. So let's see who we got, who we got rocking out with us right now. Who we got? We got Brazil, Australia, Champagne, and Stanford. I look for your name every day. I appreciate the support, dog. Pat and USA, Croatia, uh, Houston, what's up? Israel, what's going on? Uh, Argentina, Panama, Poland, South Africa, Buenos Aires. What's up to my people down there in South America? Big Africa, what's going on? Mexico, Australia. Germany, uh, Texas, Tokyo, Canada, Belgium, Peru, 
Argentina, Austria. We got South America. We got we south of the equator tonight. That's that's probably why because it's like daytime over there. Y'all just now waking up. That's pretty cool. England, AZ, SoCal. You know everybody's talking about this profit package. A lot of people in the chat. I will have a link for this profit package in the description and the number one comment. So you look at that top comment. You click the profit package and you can be profitable probably this weekend off of a few trades. And I lay it out right there. ABC how to make that money. Uh, lastly, we got Colorado Springs, San Antonio, Houston. The New Zealand, baby, Canada, uh, Algeria, Australia. That's all I got, man. You can see we global. The doors are always open. Facebook group, 7,000 people, a community, number one empowered community in the world, profit package, on point, ready to break out 40 to 60% in a couple weeks. So again, if you appreciate this content, like, subscribe, and share. That's all I ask. You know, copy and paste this URL. Let somebody else be empowered and actually understand how crypto works. Cryptonomics, baby. Class ended. That being said, it's that time of the day. No matter where you stay, from Brazil to the Bay in California, hey, all the way out to Germany, hey, good night, good morning, and good day. Until we meet again, y'all take it easy. Stay cryptic, y'all. Peace.